The title of this video is not clickbait. This algorithm knows every detail of your life. It knows a precise depiction of your birth and of your future death. In fact, this algorithm is a working mathematical concept and the core of an online library called the Library of Babel. A library that contains literally everything. It is the sum of human knowledge. Every book that was ever written or will be written in the future, all the things you have ever said, your biggest secret and the next thing you are about to say. And you can look it up all by yourself in this library. Now, for free, wherever you are, libraryofbabel.info. I can even prove it to you. Just think about the sentence, it doesn't matter how ridiculous, goofy or illogical it is. And now type it into the search bar of the Library of Babel. It will give you the exact page on which that exact thing you just thought about is written on. And it's not like when you input a sentence it will be added to the library. No, every page already exists. It's just about finding the correct address of that page. The library's content is categorized into numbered digital hexagons, each with four walls, which have each five shelves, with 32 volumes, also called books, which in the end each contain 410 pages. Each page is marked by a coordinate or an address corresponding to its place on the hexagonal library, so that every book can be found at the exact same place every time. In fact, everything that I said in this video so far is at this exact hexagon address on this specific wall, in this shelf, on this volume, on this exact page. It does know every detail of your life. But the thing is, it also contains every other possible variation of stories or combination of words. If you would count the amount of pages in this library, you would come up with a number of about 10 to the power of 4677. But here is the thing. The entire universe only has 10 to the 80 atoms. And yet this algorithm exists and it works with no doubts, it's not a fake. So how exactly does it work? This video is about the library of Babel, to be exact the algorithm behind it. We will take a deep look into how this algorithm works and why it even works. And I will show you how you can code this algorithm in Python on your own. To make things a little bit easier, there are a few rules which set boundaries to the algorithm. We are limited to the 26 lowercase English letters, space, comma and period. Each page in the before mentioned design of the library must contain 3200 characters. Also, the output of the algorithm must differ from the input. By changing a single digit in the input, the output must be completely different and the algorithm must work in both ways. Especially the last rule is critical. Without the reversibility, the concept would not work. The Library of Babel does not store every page on a hard disk, like already mentioned in the comparison with the amount of atoms in the entire universe that would simply be impossible to do. If you enter a specific library address, the algorithm calculates the text content using the address as an input. And if you enter a specific text you want to find the address to, the algorithm uses the text as an input in order to calculate the address. And it uses the exact same algorithm for that. It just reverses the process. So how does that look like in detail? When you search for a text, let's use lorem ipsum dollar sit amet for our example, the algorithm pads it to 3200 characters with spaces if it's shorter, because a full 3200 character long page is needed in order to calculate the address. It then reverses the string and iterates through each character. That means that the last character in our search string is the first iteration and so on. I mentioned before that we are limited to 29 characters in total, the lowercase Latin alphabet, space, comma and period. Each character in that set corresponds to a number starting from zero. That means that A equals zero, B equals one, all the way up to comma 26, space 27 and period 28. 
So with each iteration we get the character's corresponding value and multiply it with 29 to the n, where n is the current iteration count starting from 0. All the results from each iteration get summed up into a single variable, which in the end will be a pretty big number. So we just generated a base 10 number out of a base 29 text input, where every possible value from 0 to 29 to the 3200 minus 1 will correspond to a specific 3200 character long page. But before we continue, what exactly does the base mean? Any number can be expressed in any base. Our usual decimals are base 10. That means that we use 10 different digits before zeroing and adding one to the more significant digit. Computers on the other hand use numbers in base 2, also known as binary. Binary uses only the digits 0 and 1 in order to represent numbers. If we now use the digits 0 to 9 and the letters A to Z, which are 36 in total, we can store more information in less space. The hexagon address used as a coordinate in the library uses that exact base, base 36. The text on each page on the other hand uses our beforehand determined character set containing a total of 29 characters, thus making it base 29. The next step will get a bit more mathematical and technical. You can skip it if you want and still understand the next steps. Now, one approach to continue is to take random values to set the wall 1 to 4, the shelf 1 to 5, the volume 1 to 32 and the page 1 to 410 values. This might be a little bit confusing to why we would choose random values for these addresses, but I will explain it in a second. So let's say we have randomly generated these values. We will format these values into one which looks like this. Volume and page will have to be padded with zeros if needed. This, let's call it a library coordinate number, isn't linear. It has a range from 10,111 to 4,203,000 254, with 268,800 unique numbers inside this range that will describe the position in the library. Now, to clear it up why we would choose a random value for this, this library coordinate is now multiplied by a higher exponent than 3200 in order to make sure that it is still unique when added to the sum number from before. Since this number contains randomized elements, a search for a specific page will yield multiple results. The exact amount of permutations possible would be 268,800. 4 walls times 4 shelves times 32 volumes times 410 pages. The closest exponent of 29 which is higher than that number is 29 to the 4th. That means that 4 more exponents are required to uniquely identify the position in a base 29 number. Multiplying the library coordinate with 29 to the power of 3200 and adding it to the previous number gives us a resulting number between 0 and 29 to the 3204. If you just had troubles understanding it that quickly, don't worry, it also took me a while. I definitely wouldn't understand it that fast. At this point I also want to mention that I am glad for the help of the user Argon on Reddit who wrote an awesome technical deep dive and was part of my inspiration for this video. More about that later. In summary, all we just did was generating a unique numerical base 10 number out of our page content input, which looks like this. This number is about 15550 bits long. It does vary a bit. There are approaches where this number is now put through a so-called linear concrucial generator combined with a MSN twister algorithm, but we don't really know how this part is implemented on the server side of the library website. We know that this algorithm must be accurately reversible and you can think of this algorithm as a basic encryption cipher, but the key or the seed for this cipher is in the algorithm coded into the server software of the website. It is impossible for us to know unless Jonathan Basile, the creator of the website, shares it with us. That's why in the end our generated library addresses won't be the same like on libraryofbabel.info. But the algorithm is still the same and it nevertheless works in pretty much the exact same way. 
So the good thing is that we can leave that part out, thus making the algorithm simpler. And that's it. That's a basic implementation for a page content search of the library of Babel algorithm. We can input a text and get a hexagon address for it. The source code for the project is by the way open source on GitHub. So let's assume that this time we got a library hexagon address from someone else and we want to know the text on that page. Now we have a base36 hexagon address as the input and in short we basically just reverse the algorithm in order to calculate the base29 page content using the hexagon address as an input. If you are interested in a more technical deep dive, check out this reddit post by Argon, which I already mentioned before. This video wouldn't be possible without their work. The mathematical concept behind the library of Babel has far-reaching philosophical implications, touching on several key areas of philosophy such as epistemology and in particular the model and role of our language itself. By presenting a seemingly infinite connection of information and knowledge, the Library of Babel raises questions about the limits of our own perception and thoughts, and it forces us to reconsider the relationship between language and knowledge. As Michael from Vsauce said it, This thing blurs the line between invention and discovery. Did you really discover or invent that thing if its description already existed? Are your own personal thoughts even still your own? Everyone on this earth, including me, could look up your thoughts on this website right now. It is all written down. On the other side, one could argue that any page doesn't truly exist there in the way we describe existence, and as such, only the possibility exists. Let me know your thoughts about this awesome thought experiment. This video was a lot of work. If you like the content I make and want to support me, consider subscribing. Even a like or a star on GitHub helps me a lot. I also want to mention that every important source of information that helped me to produce this video is linked down in the description. If you want to see how I made an algorithm in Python which can generate real life cities in Minecraft, check out this video. Thanks for watching.